thirty, we are invited to reconvene um, in this negotiation se uh, session. We'll go through the review of our executive session, and we are reconvening the open meeting. I need approval of the minutes of January sixteenth. Move the second. Ed? Uh, good, thank you. Yeah. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions. Very good. I'd like to go over a few things uh, with everybody. First of all, <clears throat> we have heard a couple times from uh, our arbitrator, Ira LaBelle. And as far as I know, the, the present date for the beginning of arbitration with an arbitrator would be Thursday, March 5th at 3.30. Does everybody agree with that? Is that the time? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I just actually sent an email. Okay. The next, here. Here. Uh, yes. Here. Yeah. Uh, CDC seven yeah. All right. Very good. The uh, next thing is, I just want to confirm our next meeting of this of these committees would be February thirteenth at at uh, the board will meet at five and we will convene as two groups at five thirty. Does that all make sense to people? Can you repeat that date, those dates? Okay, the, the date of when we begin our operation would be March the 5th here at the CDC at 3.30. The next meeting, such as this one, would take place February 13th. The board would meet here at 5 o'clock. We would convene the rules session at 5.30. Thank you. I had some housekeeping. Uh, article 29, 29.29, uh, where uh, the one block is for a 45 minute, and in subsection B block um, used as the block of instructional assignment. We have that tentative agreement. Article 29.18. We have a proposal for the language. I think we had a discussion regarding that. Article 30 and 30.2 B. C. We have B. The license teaching and work experience. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, B. B. Is that correct? I believe that's right. Okay. So we've got those two. Um, I will give you all this and we'll have Tim sign on to actually um, um, please as well. Did you receive the ones that I emailed you? The, did you ask me to type a couple lines? Yes, I got to get, um, okay. we haven't had a chance to put those out yet, but okay. we will get those out. Um, but thank you, sir. I completely appreciate that. It's a point that I think. Uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, for 29.29A, we had said um, not less than an average of one instructional block. The word instructional in there. Is that what, that's what we put? Uh, it just says one block. Okay, we can write instructional. Okay. And then just, um, just initially.
So in a couple of things I just also want to start off at the beginning. So here's um, some things I think that we were going to respond to. Um, one of them being about that Appendix C, which Tim will in a minute um, respond to. We do have proposed language for that designated teacher, 29.18. Um, as well. Okay. okay, so Article 30, you're fine with the changes? Yes. If you sign that, yes. then we'll do that. Um, you had sent for 29.26, 29.29F, 29.31E. Uh, some of those, one of the things, so just to make sure that we've got everything lined up is, as I do, it seems it would take a uh, it'd be advantageous and efficient Sorry. if we uh, just sort of went through to see what we had to open out that we still thought we had to address out mm -hmm. um, at some point in time. Mm -hmm. I don't agree. Okay. So um, if you're right, you can do the, uh, the CDC, I think it's a the, the co curricular salary schedule for the middle mm -hmm. school and high school CDC. I had an opportunity to meet with the business manager at the CDC to go over it. And basically, we're talking about five different groups uh, Skills USA, DECA, uh, FBLA, HOSA, and Pro Start Advisor. Those are the five areas that they want to have uh, designated as a level eight in terms of Appendix C. It is very difficult to translate the responsibilities of these people directly to some of the other uh, individuals who run clubs and sports events and things at the high school. But I feel that after going over it carefully, I'm not going to go over all the details with you right now, but it appeared to me that those five organizations should be uh, compensated at a level eight. But they all seem to be relatively, relatively the same, except that one of them only has five individuals in it, the others have you know, 15 to 20, there's a lot of different things, but if you put it all together, they meet all year, they go to a lot of different things, it seemed reasonable. What we've agreed to do is to get together with the high school, with uh, Ashley, <coughs> uh, Ashley Hoyt, who is <coughs> the Director of Athletics and also does a great deal of work with the, uh, the activities, and get together with the appropriate person at, at the CDC to incorporate the same type of, 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 of grading or positioning on the grid that the high school has used. We've got a sheet there that has, I think I gave it to, to you, that has 17 different criteria. And we want to go through that individually with the CDC and Ashley to determine that's right. And if we have to add more things that would be comparable only to the CDC, we can add that. It'll just make it a great deal easier in the future to have, let's say you started a new club, <coughs> you want to do this or that, and we could go to the criterion sheet, get the number of points that that person deserves, translate it into a level, and that would be the salary, and it would be equitable. We don't have it yet, but we will have it in the future. But we have agreed that the five positions that you requested in your proposal that I listed earlier, um, our, our, we agree that, that level eight is appropriate compensation for those people. Even though they're not all the same, the reason we got it. Okay. That's great. Can you guys take Yep. Twelve. Twelve. They go from, you go from one to twelve. You go from reimbursement schedule of over $5,000. Or do you no, I think with those individuals, and what we have to do, we have to get 
labels for them. So when they yeah. go in, they can go into something like this. Got it. There would be DECA, and then you can see the points and see the level. And that Got it. Yep, I can work on that. You were going to talk about 29.18. Um, so don't have copies for all of you, but I will read off the 29.18, which is we had talked about the proposal about the designated teacher that fills in on the elementary level if there isn't a principal and uh, available. The way that our proposal is reading, teachers may but need not serve, which is as the language was, as the designated teacher in charge. In the absence of the building administrator, provided the teacher who is having agreed to so serve completes that which the teacher has agreed to do. That's a great sentence, and we're going to change it. Try to keep it simple. So, the new language, the additional new language is the designated teacher in charge shall be selected by the building administrator and shall be duly compensated with an annual stipend of $1,200 distributed evenly between the first payroll in January and last payroll in June. The designated teacher in charge is not required to hold an administrative license. A designated teacher in charge will only be designated in elementary schools without an assistant slash associate principal. Uh, so that is what our proposal is on that. I think if there are any questions, we can talk about it, but I think from the naming to the, the dollar amount. Um, that's what we've, we've put in. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to need to caucus about this one just because of one piece um, that I want to make sure that we discuss. Mm -hmm. um, if, if one of the issues is if there are two people who get designated as we put out, then we can talk about that. As oh, as yeah. That, then split, it would be split. It would yeah. be split. Um, as well. Yeah, that, that we understand. Um, it actually has more to do with the uh, only being in elementary schools with an assistant associate associate principal. So we just want I I want to make sure that the, but that's what the issue is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, from our understanding, at least, if you come back and you say to me that it's needed in the in a building that has an assistant principal, then I'm going to have additional questions that we probably should talk about because obviously. You have two two administrators. It's kind of like the president and the vice president not going on the same plane, right? Yeah. But sometimes, sometimes they may actually yeah. do so, and I, and I understand that. Yeah. So, if if that is what the concern is, um, I will also be very transparent, and it's probably not surprising. We'd like to understand how frequently it is happening. Yep, absolutely. And that's what I've talked about. Okay. Yep. You had um, made a proposal about the uh, 29.26? Yes. Are you guys okay to talk about that? Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if, if I understood this, uh, take a look at this, that this is that if a uh, teacher proposed their prep time to do administrative meetings, to do staffing issues, um, or the absence of the specials, Subject teacher, I'm assuming translated in my brain, that's like the art teacher, the music yeah. teacher, correct? Or library, the teacher shall be compensated at the following rate for the last mm -hmm. And if I understand that you're, you guys asked for a five dollar an hour increase yes. in each of the categories. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. For that piece, we're just asking to increase it five dollars um, because that that rate, as far as we can tell, has not gone up in a very long time. Um, and I think over, what did you say, over 15 years or something, 10 years? At least. At least, yeah. Um, so just keep it you know, in account. Um, and it's in multiple places in the contract. So for the elementary school, for the middle school and high school, if, for example, there's a shortage of subs, or if um, somebody has to cover, cover a class that they don't normally teach, um, they get paid at that rate. So that was um, we do understand that, and I want to uh, make sure that I'm, I'm clear on this one. Um, right now, as an example, for fiscal year 19, um, 
the high school has already gone over budget on, on, on that. Um, this is something, the 29.26, the year requested increase, as a bottom line, is not budget, right? Um, one, of, one of the things that we also considered is uh, that it is a 25% increase for the zero to 30 minutes, a 20% increase, 31 to 45 minutes, uh, approximately 16% increase for the 46 to 60 minutes. So the concern is, um, as I said right now, is that in, in terms of trying to budget that out for the upcoming school year, for July 1st, 2020, yes, 20, thank you, did June 30th, 2021, there, there isn't an increase um, amount for the budgeting. So that is problematic, I think, for the board. The issue is that the board needs to have a conversation about is if we're going to be doing more than a, a multi-year, whether or not it is appropriate to do so. I am curious about how long, because I know it was the same amount in the last, so we just did one year. It was in the last contract, so that covers four years, I believe. Three. 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 I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, one plus two. Yeah. So do you think it was ten years? I, I think, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, well, I'm looking at you, but because no, I know. You look Jen, Jen's our Jen's our expert on longevity. In terms of numbers, I I we were unable to actually thought, like I don't have copies of previous contracts, so I am only speaking from memory. I don't recall it ever being different. I've been covering for a really long time. I don't know if we can dig up old contracts or okay. where that would be. Um, and but it's definitely significantly longer than the last three years. Yep, okay. and, and I can say from, from a high school perspective, yeah. I would imagine that part of the reason we've gone over um, budget in that regard is because we've had a shortage of subs, and so right. teachers need to keep covering. Um, and we've had a shortage of both regular subs and long-term subs. So we also have, we've had some staff members out because of illness um, who their classes are being covered at this rate. Um, right, and, and then I understand that so that you understand, just generally speaking, in the middle school, it's actually both for it, it's actually running almost on par with with the amount that was budgeted, which is interesting as well. But we did see when when we looked at the numbers that the high school is significantly above the budgeted. And we we have had a couple of um, of and we have had a couple of teachers out for longer periods where they decided not to get along with the for. So, so I will say that the initial response from the board, at least for the first year, not, not having the, the funds budgeted, that's a difficult decision. The board needs to have a further conversation about looking forward if, if we're doing a multi-year contract um, regarding that one. Um, the, the same response, I want to is also on your proposal for appendix B. Is that a per diem rate? Yeah, the $52.41, you're asking for the assignment rate of $52.41. I can I can give you a background on that. I, I would actually appreciate it. Awesome, that. yeah. So um, we did a lot of research on this question. Um, and we, because uh, our current per diem rate is $32.75. Um, According to the United Federation of Teachers, the um, uh, average per diem rate for a teacher is 5241, which is why that was our proposal. Um, but we also looked at some surrounding districts. Uh, and for example, um, this is just taking for example, Mount Greylock, um, where we end up, let's face it, where we end up losing a lot of teachers to, um, their per diem rate is $68. Um, we are, oh, we of course recognize that $68 is more than our district is, is able to spend. Um, we felt that proposing 5241 um, to just put us on, uh, on par with the um, national average would be more advantageous for us because just like the um, coverage rate, our per diem rate, again, we weren't able to find 
total number of years, but our per diem rate has not gone up in a very long time as well. So, so that is, again, probably not a surprising response. Is one is it's a 60% increase. Of, yes. I think you know that. Uh, yep. You probably did the math yep. before I did. Uh, regarding that, um, and it is something which isn't budgeted, at least in the first year, I think, you know, as, as we have to go forward about things, because it is a, it, it is a money amount, it is mm -hmm. a dollar amount, that um, having a further conversation about whether or not it works um, in, in, a, in a future year, I think we can have that, the board is willing to have that conversation regarding that. Um, so it's the United Federation of Teachers. Mm -hmm. So um, just, you know, we we want to point out and acknowledge the fact that we are well below the national average for for DM rate. Are you aware other than um we looked at whatever? Yes, and I didn't write that. Okay. Um, but we looked at I think we looked at Arlington, and we looked at, I think we looked at BBA, Arlington, Greylock, we like could confirm. Um, we looked at a couple uh, couple others around the state. There was one um, contract we found that was, I think, $50.40, um, but they all seem to be, they're all more than ours, um, and they all seem to be around um, around that 52 mark. Mount Greylock was, was the biggest one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the Ranger King now is 30, 32, 32 75. 32, 75. That's right, it, it is as big as we, to be honest, we were a little surprised at, at how much we were we were off. So, um, so you know, there are there are alternative ways, and maybe that's part of the creative conversation about mm -hmm. the year two of doing it. Is that there's um, there are districts that do a mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. and things of that. So mm -hmm. I it, not. By any stretch of the imagination, saying the board isn't willing to engage in that conversation, it's just for the just wanted to make sure that we had a response regarding that it's problematic for us for the, the first year to contemplate it as a dollar uh, figure, you know, as we further discuss other money issues. And we are absolutely willing to have that conversation. Okay. Thank you. Um, there were a couple of other things that I just wanted to to respond to? Sure. If you guys are, are willing. Absolutely. Okay. I think we're, we're done. Um, so last time we had a discussion about, um, oh gosh, 8.14, 8.14, um, the uh, article about OSHA and OSHA um, law. And we as an organization feel it's important to add district policies on safety. Um, because it's an acknowledgement that the safety of students and staff is important to the board. Uh, it still allows for policies to change. We are aware of that, um, and we encourage that. But it ensures that whatever policies are in effect are followed, and it shows the policies developed by the district and the board are important for teachers and students. Um, uh, and we also want to clarify the point the board made last time about uh, preparation and collaboration time. Um, yeah, there was a whole discussion about that. Um, while we're aware that Shaftesbury and Pound get the time we have asked for, Molly Stark, Ben Allen, Monument do not. Monument gets time, but not the time that we're asking for. Um, these are five schools in the same district. And the time a child's teacher gets to prepare, collaborate, and plan optimal learning experiences for students should not depend on the school your child attends, especially now that we are all one unified school district. Um, so that's a piece there. Uh, also, we'd like to address the course prepayment issue. Um, so you 
came with a counter proposal to uh, limit prepayment to um, a BA seven and below the promissory note. Um, we agree uh, that a promissory note is um, is a good idea, uh, but we disagree with the statement that people higher on the pay scale are less likely to need financial support. Um, in addition to not being equitable, it is presumptuous to assume that longer term employees who are more likely to have children in college or ailing parents have fewer financial needs. Um, so we just want that stated. Um, so you're still asking for it to be across the board for anyone, mm -hmm. but you're open to the idea of a promise for Absolutely, we're open to the idea of a promise for um, And we are definitely open to talking about what that is and what that looks like. Um, I don't know if it is on their website, but Orleans Central, I can tell you, um, in the past couple of years, I've taken a look at it. Okay. Um, and then the other piece is that um, if you are agreeable, um, well, yeah, uh, we're not prepared tonight uh, to consider additional compensation uh, or like salary grid issues um, until more of our language proposals are addressed. Um, our members feel that the language issues are of the utmost importance. Um, and I think, I think both sides recognize that compensation is something that will require a back and forth. Um, but in terms of language, we feel that some of those things could actually be um, resolved sooner. Mm -hmm. okay. Does it make sense to go through what is left? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, yeah. Do you want to start? Do you want me to start? No, if you, if you start, I think that's Okay, so if we go through, do you want to start with our proposals? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so we have had back and forth discussions on 8.14, um, but it has not been approved. Um, 10.1 has not been addressed. Um, that's the an employee retained active employee status while using, utilizing any paid time off. Um, 11.5A3 about parental or family leave has not been addressed. I'm sorry, that was 11.5. 11.5A3. And A4 and A5 just by moving down the number. Um, 21.2 we have been discussing. So that's the, um, course prepayment. Um, 29.1A we're working on, that's the um, designated teacher in charge. Uh, 29.21 has not been addressed. Um, that's the one about uh, if a teacher agrees to be a member of a school directed committee outside of contracted hours, they will be compensated at the regular for DM rate. Um, which I believe is a practice in most buildings and with most committees, but is not necessarily <coughs> across the board. Um, so just having it in the contract is really affordable. So, can I? Yes. So, school committee directed, so I say you need to be on a literacy committee, they're meeting after school. How it is. The, that, that's the, right, yep. the administrator, I tell you, yep. that's what you're talking about. It's yep. not if you volunteer to do it or whatever, right? It's that I, that's the administrator to do it. Yeah. In the schools where you're saying that it is being done, mm -hmm. first question, it's a compound question. Yep. How is that tracked? And, I can answer that. And the second one is how, how many schools are we talking about that are, aren't doing it? Mm -hmm. So for the second question, we'd have to caucus first to make sure that um, 
I'm getting my facts correct. But for the first question, um, take for example high school, uh, the contracted day ends at three o'clock. If you have a committee that runs after three o'clock, so three to three thirty, um, a person would fill out a timesheet uh, that is then signed by usually the administrator in that central office, and the person will get compensated for their time at the three two seventy five rate. And those hours are pre-approved by central office. Um, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're fine. <laughs> um, and I can get you an answer to that other other piece Thank after you. the caucus. Um, 29.23 slash 29.24. Um, I believe it's just a cleanup of language, that one. Um, and we have not talked about it. Oh, that's what it is. It eliminates um, language about a volunteer list for elementary schools, because there is no volunteer list, and we acknowledge that duties are an important part of being an educator. So um, we don't know of any school that actually works on a volunteer list, so we'll just be blaming on that, that piece. Um, 29.26 and 29.27 are elementary language for meeting times, um, which you, we've gone a little bit back and forth. Um, we proposed language, you said you can't put numbers, we're, we, that's the thing we've been going back and forth on. Mm -hmm. 29.29a, we've accepted, we have a we have a tentative agreement in either already signed or in the works. Um, 29.32d has not been addressed. Um, that's the piece that uh, puts CDC course coverage on the same level as high school course coverage. Um, where at the high school you receive an additional one sixth of your salary for an additional um, course, like if you take on an additional full course with planning and everything, um, this would put the CDC on the same piece. Um, 30.2C, I believe was one of the ones I sent you. Um, that's the typo? Yes. Um, that's that. 30.7, um, I'm actually not sure what we did with 30.7. Mm -hmm. uh, I think 30.7 we each had a version of, and we may or may not, sorry, I'm okay. I actually don't know that we, have settled that one. Um, so I don't think I don't think we've addressed thirty point seven. Um, it's about uh, CDC credit and CTE teachers. Um, and then Article thirty one uh, has not been um, let me think. The, yeah, so um, we haven't fully settled the 31 discussion on definitions of um, including a piece on on um, 31 with one with the teacher definition, part-time teacher, and probationary teacher. And then the last thing is Appendix C, which we just talked about. That and the um, gender neutral language. So those are our So we can cross off the appendix C, right? Yeah, we have a we have a full right. sensitive agreement. Yeah. We'll take a look at the twenty nine point eight. Twenty nine point three four was a cleanup of language you said. I believe so. I believe that was the uh, the twenty nine point. Wait, hang on. Sorry. Which one did you just say? 
29.32 is the piece where we're putting the CDC to have the same thing as the high school? Right, but three four. We don't have it on that one. Are you talking about 29.23? Um, yes, 29.23, 29.24. Okay. Um,
what you identified really quickly here um, on some of these. Uh, we hear what you're saying about the 8.14 norm. Um, it's probably, uh, if he hasn't, he can explain to you uh, the board's position on, on laying out the issue of district policies on safety within a collective bargaining agreement. The board still believes that 8.14 does cover what is um, the relevant state federal law. Um, oh, Leon is back for a Hi, Leon. Um, 8.14 does cover the relevant uh, state and federal law, which covers uh, safety issues. Uh, the board thinks that that is, in fact, um, sufficient and doesn't believe that change needs to be made on that one as well. Um, 10.1, there, there was a discussion in your, your proposal on 10.1. What, what we're trying to understand, um, although I think at the end I, I can answer uh, comprehensively, but an employee who goes out, if you're an employee, you go out, you're on sick leave. You do retain active employee status while utilizing your paid time off. If you're an employee who goes out, in, in essence, you're still, if I'm sick and I have 180 days, I have 60 days, however that may be. If I go out on sick leave and I'm utilizing sick leave, I get paid out of what my pay is, also out of the use of my sick leave, my premium cost for my health insurance is taken out, and whatever deductions I have. So they do retain as an active employee from that point of view. They're, they haven't been removed off of the roles as an employee. So from our understanding of, of what you're seeking here, that actually happens. So we're not sure why we need the change. Um, at least for the part that talks about an employee retains active employee status while utilizing any paid time off. So I don't know if we're misunderstanding how that works, but if you're on FMLA and you don't have sick leave, then you are considered an active employee. If you're on FMLA, you don't have sick leave, but you get the sick leave bank donation to you, you're considered an active employee. So we're not sure why there would be any need for the 10.1 change. Um, 11.5A, where you're asking if, about um, parental or family leave and the employee's option, the teacher will be granted up to 12 weeks paid leave outside of accrued sick personal time, which in essence would be contemplated as maternity or paternity leave. Um, the board it is not in agreement with adding that benefit. Uh, some of you may be aware there are conversations in the legislature about maternity and, and or paternity leave for equity. I would assume that they, they're talking about both. Obviously, if the law changes, we would follow through with the law. Um, on the 21.2, which we had um, offered for the to do the prepay for the B7 and below, and the promissory note. Um, we contemplated your request, uh, your request, and your proposal still to have it for everyone. Um, we can't ag agree with having it for everyone at this point in time. Um, and at this point, I think the board is also withdrawing what their counter proposal was regarding the course prepayment. 29.18. So, sorry, can I just clarify? Yep. Um, so you're withdrawing the proposal that uh, seven years and below would be able to be repeated with yeah. a promissory note? Yes.
attitude regarding designated teacher is the one um, that they would like to stick with as their proposal. I will say we'll talk us about the issue of Benel <coughs> and have a conversation if that changes when we talk about that. Um, 29.21, uh, as I indicated when, I, when we came back and provided the information regarding the school directed committee outside of the contracted hours, um, being compensated at the uh, basically the hourly rate, the out of out of hours hourly rate. Um, those are not uh, budgetary items right now. Uh, definitely for the first year, they're not budgetary. They are, as I indicated, um, typically grant monies that are utilized that way uh, to do that as well. Um, and the board is not in agreement with 29.21. Uh, 29.23, 29.24. Uh, we haven't really had a discussion regarding that. Um, the teachers being assigned to a regular duty, may be assigned to regular duty rosters by the principal to ensure adequate supervision of students. Duties shall be assigned on an equitable basis based on consideration of both the type and relative time environments of the specific duties. Um, and also you have, I think it is, if they're assigned to more than one building, they shall not be assigned administrative duties. That's already in that. That's the language, language that's in there, right? Yep. Uh, is that at 29.23 or 29.23? It's current, I believe it's currently at 29.23. Um, but you were saying to move it to 29.24 29 if, well, in accordance to 29.21. Right, so uh, it's clearly fine with that. 29.26, we have had a lot of discussion about this. Um, uh, this is about the prep plan. One of the things that the board, the board has discussed this with their principals. Um, you know, what, what's interesting, I, I think, from the board's perspective is that there isn't actually equity um, for teachers. Elementary school teachers um, have significantly more student contact time than high school teachers have. <coughs> um, yet they're both on the same pay scale, which that's not equitable. Um, there, there are differences in how a high school schedule is run. There are differences in a middle, a middle school schedule, and there's a difference in an elementary school schedule. Um, the board, at this point, cannot agree to be setting out a prep time, a significant prep time, each day in each building. Um, as part of the contract. In terms of getting the prep time overall for the week for elementary school teachers, um, that should be occurring. So if that's not occurring, then we need to know that it's not occurring and we need to deal with that and affect that. That prep time, even the weekly amount, however, gets affected by if you have a snow day, gets affected by if you have a class trip. Obviously, those hours drop off. For the hour that is designated almost for that daily hour should be dropping off. So for 29.26, uh, the board is still at the point where we can't agree to set off a specific time schedule wise, um, at least 40 minutes as you're asking of each day, uh, set, setting that off for a time. Um, Again, the 29.27, which you proposed, um, you know, the 60 minutes is, is removing 60 minutes more than of um, student contact time. It's, I think. Is it, was also, it was also to um, clean up the language that had Something about what was it, 2012? Um, right. Versions in 2012. Uh, so it was cleaning up that language as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I'm, we're going to have to look at the 29.27 a little bit clearer for that one. Um, so the 29.2a goes with the 29.26. And to answer the question that you posed with 29.26, um, like we've said before, even a weekly average is not um, provided equitably for elementary schools. I don't think that we disagree that that has to be something that is further looked into by the administration to, to rectify. Um, 29.32D, which I think would pass on the CDC, if, I'm, if we're understanding this correctly. The CDC schedule um, is uh, a little bit different. I think that's part of it, but um, in terms of the budget issue and adding the additional one-sixth of the applicable teacher's annual salary prorated for the number of days so assigned, it may wind up, and I, I'm not probably going to articulate this well enough, but it may wind up it's a very small amount of time that you're talking uh, that the teacher is in fact covering. Um, so the board is not in agreement with doing the one-sixth of the annual salary prorated for the number of days assigned. 30.2C, I believe, was the typo cleanup. It should have said two steps, so yep. it says two steps. We're obviously great with that. Uh, the 30.7, um, the board is not in, agree in agreement that the credits could be used for horizontal movement at the equivalent of 15 CEUs to one. Maybe in the non-renewal 
something. It's in the non way. We, we were just going for an actual section, uh, like a definition section that's more. Yeah, and I think that's, and, and I think uh, the board's fine with, with doing that other than that change. Um, okay. From the 20 hours to 17 point. Understood. Five hours. <coughs> we dealt with the appendix C. Mm -hmm. And we'll just deal with the he, she, his, her, yep. they, and there. And I think that fits everything pretty well. Am I right? Yep, I believe so. Okay. So then. Um, oh, um, just a clarification. Uh, you said for 29.2324, got one. Um, at the end, you said we're fine with that. Does that mean? Um, I'm sorry, 29. The 29.2324, um, the duty roster. You said that there hadn't been discussion on that. Right, you said that that came out of how it is already from the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only the only thing we took out is that it was um, a volunteer, or was it a volunteer list? Is that what it was? Um, right. So it's right. just teachers may be assigned. Right, you would right. Okay. Um, so um, would you like me to write up a potential agreement? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'll do that. Right, I mean, it's a, it's a practice. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, Okay. Thank you for the clarification. So ten point one, I think we. Um, Do you want me to just restate our position on that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so our position is that uh, we're willing to discuss a reevaluation of sick days, um, but as of right now, 10 days of sick leave does not currently provide for what our um, what our members need, um, and even more so than that, the uh, the idea that. Um, Teachers hired from July 1st and on shall be permitted to accumulate only 100 school days. Um, that is that is something we can we do not agree with. Uh, just just to make sure that that from you, you get from the board's perspective is tying it into the long term disability and that benefit that's being provided along those lines. Um, okay, so that's fine. Uh, Ten point four. Um, I'm not sure that we got an absolute response. I will say part of why we're asking for, and it does, you know, may not seem very significant, the four days is that we actually have, in fact, had individuals who um, have not been as forthcoming regarding medical information and their sicknesses. So we have to have issues. That's why we're asking for four days. But we have not, I believe, Talked about that. Um, 11.5 we already dealt with. Do you know that? Okay, that's right. Unless I'm missing Which one? I'm sorry. 11.5 we already have agreed to. Oh, yeah, I think you said okay. Okay. 3.24. I mean, we've talked about that point. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. 10.5 is the is the issue that the board would would um, move towards the um, long term disability. I think Norm maybe knows that whether or not to contract Norm into this. Whether or not Wyndham Northeast still has the provision. I believe they had had a provision that was something along the lines of um, paying until the. Paying until the exclusionary period um, was dealt with a 90-day calendar. Is it's a 90-day calendar exclusionary period? That's why we're saying the 100 days would be sufficient because 90 calendar days is less than 100 sick days, uh, depending on when you in fact uh, would start for the count for the exclusionary period, depending on the time of the year. God forbid if something happened to you. I think it runs anywhere between 55 and 70 some days. 
Luke is roughly uh, where it is. Um, so the you know the issue of the the sick leave bank I'm going to be very blunt from a fiscal perspective. That's a, uh, an unfunded mandate. I think Nick provided you guys with a lot of the days uh, with a number of the days that were in there. Uh, the disability insurance is a benefit, which we also have been provided you the information on that despite paying for it, it's not utilized. Um, it does, and hopefully nobody from the insurance company is listening, it does shift the expense <laughs> to the insurance company as opposed to um, maintaining that expense as, as a salaried expense. So we would still uh, like to talk about that. We think that there are ways of managing balancing out individuals who need to have that, that long time off, a long term time off, and also managing it fiscally in a responsible manner. So I know that you all um, had indicated that you were not in agreement with that, but we're still keeping that there. 11.5, as I said, I think we had an agreement on it. I think I said the tentative for that. Mm -hmm. 
and that is where the teacher gets the one sixth of the of their annual salary prorated for the number of days so assigned. So if the math teacher has to go out for a certain period of time, another math teacher picks it up, right? Yeah. Is there? Am I misunderstanding that a block is a block? I guess. Um. In other words, is 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 it is it up to sixty minutes is a block, or is it? There are 85 minute blocks in somewhere, and, I, and, and we've missed that. So since I since I don't teach at the middle school, um, I I refer to caucus just to give you a clear answer on okay. that. Um, because just so that the intention is understood. Yeah, we thought absolutely. Was a block. Okay. So yeah, if you guys could talk about that, that would be great because I just think removing. Yeah, and, and our feeling is that it's it's for two different purposes. <coughs> so, okay. yeah. Uh, for the twenty nine point three one, mm -hmm. the remaining forty five minutes of time may be assigned for professional learning school initiatives at the discretion of the building administrator. Um, I believe we had a counter proposal to that. Um, but uh, I can I can restate it if we um, for some reason didn't no, get to it. Did, but I don't think that we clearly. Um, so what our counter proposal is that the remaining forty five minutes of time may be used for, uh, let's see, collaboration, additional student contact time, at discretion of the teacher, teacher prep, or club activities. At discretion of the teacher, teacher prep, or club activities. That's one of the ones that, that I typed up, but we didn't sign. Right. Yeah. So that's been agreed to? That has been it agreed has been to, yes. Okay. That's B? Yeah. Thank you. 
11 actually goes, 11.6a, bless you. We've talked about, and we still think that that's an important issue. We know that we can disagree with that one. Um, and D, I believe you didn't agree with the, the first and last two were work weeks, but you did agree with the director change. Correct. Right. So that is still something. However, though, when we get to the A part, 11.6A, um, and we still would like to have, uh, we're still considering those. Uh, <coughs> we're good. A, I believe we were fine. Yes. Mm -hmm. B, I'm not sure that we've actually discussed too much or have we? That was one that was a question that we weren't sure we had gone through. Um, I believe we accepted that. Did you accept I think we, I think we have a tentative agreement on that. Uh, that's 2932B. Because there was one. No, 27. No, 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 that's the one that, that's the one that got, the 29.32 was the one that came back because there was an additional thing. We yes. put an additional. Yes. Um, yeah, no, 27.7 was something I think was signed last time. Okay. Just, I, I still don't understand 2932B, but where are we at? I don't think we've gotten there yet. Okay. We haven't really had that um, conversation about it. That was the one that I had thought that we had had the conversation. I had confused 29.32B with 27.7B. Um, with Got it. Okay. Okay. That's where I had confused those two. Okay. So we haven't really had that conversation about 29.32B. Um, you know, I can obviously. I think we need to have a further conversation about it, but what we're going for here is, is quite honestly, is that um, we think that the um, state cluster meetings and the professional networking meetings are very important. Unlike if you're a teacher, like a math teacher, I'll use again in the high school and there are other math teachers. Um, I'm not gonna get the titles right for uh, teachers at the CDC, and I apologize, but say you're the auto tech teacher, at, at the CDC, you're one of them, you're somewhat siloed. And I would think that these, um, you know, being, a, being uh, active in the state cluster meetings and professional networking activities, um, and that, that this is occurring, that uh, we think that that has um, a benefit because you learn of industry requirements, you learn of, you know, regulations, you get input from, other people about how those regulations are in fact um, impacting on on your topic area, and then it's it's an area for collaboration. Um, so that's something that we'd like to have a conversation um, about. I know that you all haven't really responded to that one, um, other than when I confuse it with twenty seven point seven, <coughs> which I continue apparently to do. So we would like to have that conversation as well. Um, and the 29.32B is um, just a very simple one. I think we had a very brief conversation about that. And 29.34, I have that we have a DA on that. Yes. So I think that is everything. Uh, we would like to pause to um, address a few of these. Is there, is there anything else you can I don't know. I'm just, I'm just still not uh, clear on 2932D. Yeah. Uh, was your response to removing that sentence? What? 2932D? Right. Yeah, to other proposals from uh, December 19th. Yep. Um, I just want to caucus just to make sure that I'm on the same page as our CDC program. Okay. Okay. 
Um, but I think we can have either a yay or an I can tell you we'll have either a yay or an A by the way. How much time do you need? Um, Maybe you just want to know what you're going to do. Five minutes. He's ever optimistic, by the way. 7.30? 7.30? Let's do 7.30. 7.30? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's bring this to order, please. Thank you. Is that action? You know, get out. Well, I don't know. He wants to get his camera going. Direct, directed by Tim Holden. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a um, couple of things. So 29.32B, um, so this is the last page of the CDC reports. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps you locate where you are. Okay, so um, we reject the um, the piece where teachers may be assigned up to an annual average of 20 minutes per day of administrative duties. Um, yeah, uh, but we absolutely accept the um, teachers are expected to fulfill their professional obligations. We also feel, uh, such as state cluster meetings, etc. we, uh, as an organization, definitely also feel that these are important, particularly for um, CDC teachers. The, um, the other piece, uh, 39.32D, sorry, I, I apologize, 39.32. 29. 29. 29. 29.32A, thank you, Mr. Penny. Um, we have to reject the elimination of teachers assigned or willing to teach additional classes shall not be assigned to administrative not teaching duties. Um, because we feel that teachers who are teaching additional classes should not have administrative duties um, on top of that. We uh, went back and talked about um, Article 29, the 29.29 A and B, um, and uh, upon further um, evaluation of that, we are willing to accept um, Part B. We've signed that proposal and we are passing that down. So you can disregard the original vote, well, one that I came back with, edited. Um, we have signed so that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is one. There are two corrections we made. So the first one is that we added the word instructional. So it's one instructional block, and we changed a comma to a period because it should be a period as opposed to a comma. Um, <coughs> oh yeah, this is echo. Yeah, that's fine. One instructional block. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and then the other piece we wanted to address uh, was about the sick bank. Um, we, as an organization, don't understand how it is unfunded since it's funded by member days. Um, it's actually funded by previous year's member days uh, because they haven't used member days in a few years. Um, to fund the sick bank. So it has already been paid for um, by previous members. Um, and also, uh, one point that we want to reiterate. Um, which, which, excuse me, so yes. what, what number are you on? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is 10.5 for the sick leave bank. Um, and the other piece is that the sick leave bank covers things that do not fall under a long-term disability. So if a teacher has run out of sick days and has the flu, for example, and needs to apply for, I mean, it, they probably wouldn't apply for something like the flu, but if it was something um, where they just needed more days and it would not fall under long-term disability, um, the sick bank uh, covers something like that, um, that long-term disability does not. So eliminating the sick bank would be eliminating um, a resource that members um, use and find important to use. Can I respond to that? Then? Part of, part of where um, I'm saying that it is an unfunded mandate, is, and if you, if you have the belief that you have paid into that system, then there's a belief that underlies that, which I, I don't believe is true, which is that um, budgets account for every possible system being taken. So in other words, budgets don't get drafted saying that every teacher will take every sick day that they get. 
Um, Hopefully not. Okay, no, great. There's a utilization principle there um, that sick days uh, are very small. And I can check with Renee. They may not, in fact, some districts don't even do a calculation regarding sick days, but that's not fiscally that's not fiscally prudent necessarily. But some some don't do some very do, they do a very low rate. So there really isn't a pain into it in that sense of that there's been a dollar saved for for a district, unless you also believe that all teachers would take all of their time, and that we would have to pay what their whole pay was. Um, you know, sick leave, it, it's kind of a hot button emotional issue, I think, a lot of times in negotiations. And, if, <coughs> and, you know, we're open to having conversations, and I don't think we have, about creative ways of addressing some of those concerns um, for your members. But a sick thing truly is the, the bane of every board's existence. Um, every board that has permitted a sick day um, finds it to, to be problematic on way or, one way or another. One is it finds it pr problematic from a financial perspective. Two, it finds it problematic in terms of sometimes there's not fairness in how decisions are made. Who gets sick leave? Um, boards don't want to be involved in those decisions because they find sometimes, so a lot of times, that it, it's not fair how the criteria are put out. So sick bank pose a lot of problems for boards. Um, we would like to, I think, have a conversation. We've, we've sort of uh, tossed about some ideas, but having that, and I think I mentioned it at the beginning when we first did our initial proposals, having some creative ideas about how we can address uh, some of those issues in <clears throat> coverage. Um, I can tell you right now, today is Thursday, it's Thursday night. Currently, 10% of your colleagues already are signed up to be out tomorrow. That's a pretty significant amount. And it is an amount that we see as, I think, the information that the Human Resource Department uh, showed to you guys, that there are certain days which seem to be more popular than others. Um, there are probably times of the year that are more popular than others, and so that's also concerning too. Um, so the use of sick time and sick banks, I, I, there's that balancing I think that has to happen at a certain point from being able to provide a benefit which is, is respectful of, of, of you all and, and your colleagues in your bargaining unit and it provides a benefit to you. But something that is also manageable for the district. So I think, you know, we're supposed to have a conversation with the mediator. I would not be surprised that we're going to have maybe some conversations about some, wanting to have some conversations about some unique alternatives or differences, I think, of how we handle uh, sick leave. I'm assuming we're going to the mediator. Unless you guys agree to everything that we've, we've put out on the table. Um, we don't want you to have a hard time. I would be, I think actually I might be doing, I can't fall off my chair because that would be devastating um, at this point, especially if not if it was on the left hand side. But yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I think that um, in response to you saying 10% of us are going to be out tomorrow, I think that's an unfair statement. We are in the height of flu season. Um, strep throat is going around, stomach bugs are going around. I think that that really needs to be taken into account when we're throwing out numbers like 10% of us are going to be out tomorrow when people are encouraged to stay home when they're sick. There are protocols in place with nurses if you have a fever, if you have diarrhea, if you are vomiting. You should not be in the workplace, and you should not be out in public. There is a huge flu epidemic happening right now, and I think it's unfair to say, oh, just 10% of you are going to be out, and this is happening, and it's reality. Yeah, I give you that as an example. I think we gave you guys historical data that, that we've been able to track about when people take time off. I get it, it is flu, cold and flu season. Yes, we would rather that you're not infecting your colleagues um, and coming in if you're truly sick. But we also can track that Mondays, I think it was Mondays and Fridays, it definitely is Fridays being the most popular day. Uh, the most frequent absences happen on Fridays. Um, you know, 
you can track personal leave usage that the closer you get to, to May and June, and there may be uh, valid reasons for that, because I can also explain that, that personal usage goes up in May or June, it's probably because people have saved their personal use time, and then they decide that they have it, and they want to you know, utilize it before the end of the school year. Or they have children who are graduating college, or... There are things that, right, there, there are things that happen. I'm not saying that all of your colleagues out are, are inappropriately utilizing their sick leave. I think that what we're saying is, is that it's a very large district. It's a very large impact on kids when 10% of the teachers are out or whatever percent of the teachers are out. Um, it, it's an impact on the kids. It's an impact on, on the district financially. If we could, in fact, get subs um, more frequently. That's a double pay, uh, basically. Um, but so we, that's why we want to have a conversation about having sort of that, that benefit, but having it where it's man, more manageable. So that's what I would say. So, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised that we're going to, if we have to go forward and respond to that. We, we haven't had that opportunity. Thank you. So, just something else you guys wanted to. Um, we are supposed to meet on the 13th. <coughs> do you have? Do you happen to print out the um, the tentative agreements that you asked me to put? I can't print them here. I, I need to get. Got it. Okay. Good. So until next time. So we'll do that. Um, unless so you can print them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you email. I can. I can try. Yeah. If I actually have coverage, so we'll do that, um, or we can do it next time, which I think is easier for you guys. Because the other thing I can do is I can just run that We'll do it next time. All right. Is there anything else to be brought before this committee? Not right now. Okay. okay. We'll ask. Ask for motion. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.